Recently, I got to shoot an awesome merch campaign for a deli that I regularly shoot for. They have a new line of merch coming out and they asked me if I would come up with a cool concept for it. This was the first time I have done anything like this. It was a very big project and it involved other people and new ways of working that I really want to share with you guys. I want to share what I learned, what went well, what didn't, and the three main processes that I went through to get to this end product. So the first stage of this process was what I call conceptualizing, and it's 100% my favorite part of the process. It also happens to be, in my opinion, the most important. If you don't get these things down pat with your client, or even if you're just working on a personal project, I think your end result really suffers. This is the time where you can think about things like expectations of everybody involved. And it's a really good time to establish those to ensure that there's no animosity or confusion, especially if you are working with someone who is paying you. So here are some things that I consider when I work on projects like this. The first one is motivation. So what's the motivation behind the project or the person hiring you for it? In this instance, it was to showcase the new line of merch for a new store opening. Some examples of other types of focus could be brand awareness, which is kind of more general, or it could be a new product, a new service, or something completely different to that, depending on what you're shooting. So knowing why the brand or the person, the business wants you to shoot those photos is going to inform what you will use, where you will go and all of the other things following. So make sure you've got a really clear idea of that. Knowing what the photos will be used for is also really important and something that I have only recently kind of started to pay attention to as I shoot everything in vertical orientation and that is not very web friendly. So consider these things. Will these photos be going on someone's website? Are they going to use them for a banner, social media posts like on Instagram, on do they want things for story? So think about all the different types of places that these photos are going to go and make sure you have that in your mind when you're shooting the project. The best way to get all of these answers is to talk to the person who is in charge. And it may seem like obvious things that you're asking, but personally, I would rather have asked those questions and maybe seem a little bit silly than not have asked them and then miss something crucial in the end. I always make a list or notes when I have this meeting with somebody so I can refer back to them. So now we've got that kind of like boring side of the first process out of the way, we can talk about the fun things like the vibe, the mood, the aesthetic, the inspiration, all those things behind the shoot. Sometimes these things can seem a little fluffy, but I think they're really important when you're creating a visual thing for somebody because you can think that you're on the same page, but then someone says that they love saturated images and then they show you their mood board and it's all like pastely and portrait looking. Keep in mind that the person that you're working with might not know all the lingo that you do. So make sure you meet them where they're at and you're using as many visuals as you can to really dial in a look and an expectation for what the photos will look like. Ensuring that you consider things like viability of what they're asking for. Sometimes people, including myself, can have really big grand ideas of what you're going to create, but you have to stop and think, is this something that I can actually do? Do I need more people on board? You know, am I over promising here? So when you're having that first conversation about a shoot or an idea, make sure you're keeping that in the back of your mind as well. Even if you come back to the client or the person and you say like, hey, I know we were going to do that shot, but it would require this, this, and this. It would cost this much, or I can't do that, but I can do this. So keeping all those things in your mind, this can be quite an overwhelming stage because, you know, people are really excited. You want to book the job. You want to say yes, but it's really better to be upfront. So now you've got that preliminary conversation out of the way. I like to move on to the planning stage and I like to do that as soon as possible. So this stage builds on some of the things that we just spoke about, but it also touches on things like location, logistics, and of course, everybody's favorite topic, gear. So the first thing I do is a mood board. Love a mood board. 
So I want to start gathering lots of examples that really convey and reflect that conversation that we had in the conceptualizing stage. So this will include the look, of course, but also things like mood and vibe or even pictures of certain locations, poses of models that I would like to use as a reference or even photos that don't necessarily speak to the actual thing that you're shooting, but you like the composition of them or you just want to use them as a reference for the shoot. You can kind of borrow from other things and bring those elements into your shoot. And I really think then it will be a lot more interesting rather than just photos of what you're taking photos of. It's also good to include examples of the kind of lighting that you will be shooting in. So a lot of the time I end up using flash because I'm shooting in indoor environments. So I like to show people a lot of examples of that, of what direct flash looks like, because when you say that to them, they might have no idea. So you want to really show them that it's going to create this kind of harsher look and it's going to have a drop shadow. It's going to illuminate one thing and maybe make the background dark. Like all those kind of examples are really great. And you could separate these things in mood boards as well to show specific examples, depending on the scope of the project. In this particular instance, I included lots of things in my mood board that I knew would appeal to the client because I've worked with them before and I know the sort of things that they've taken inspiration from in their business. And I think that's something that you can really show that you've gone above and beyond. So when we had conversations about things in the past, you know, the person has mentioned how much they love Supreme and the branding around that. So I included editorial shots of that brand in the mood board to show that that's something that I'm going to bring into the vibe of the shoot to help reflect the, you know, brand identity. Once you've got this all together, it is a great idea to obviously share it with the client and anyone else, any other stakeholder that is going to be involved. So everybody can feel like on the same page and also get really excited for what you're going to create together. Now we move on to location models and props if you're using them. So thinking about what you need to execute this shoot well and making a little list of those things. So going and looking at your mood board, looking at your notes from that first meeting and going, okay, so where am I going to shoot this? So with this particular shoot, we decided to do it in our own home, which isn't like the most amazing location ever, but I felt like we could work with it. It was quite difficult to be honest, but I really think that the results were so good. So it's really shown me how much we can do just in our own home that isn't anything special. This included moving a lot of furniture around and creating curated spaces uh, like this chair and this area behind me with the record player and making it look like it wasn't just in a standard suburban home. I also knew that I needed a model. Um, I would be in the photo shoot, which I love to do, but I needed someone else to model the merch with me. So I enlisted a friend for a model fee. This is the first time I've worked with anyone else and it was really fun to have someone else involved. I will say it was quite difficult to be in the photos and be modeling and then also be referring back to a shot list and taking some of the photos as well and kind of like worrying about all of that stuff as well as being in the photos and then not looking worried in the photos, which in some of them I did. <laughs> So as far as props went, we actually had quite a lot of the things that we needed, which is lucky, but I did have a discussion with the owner of Joe's Deli. He loves like 90s hip hop and that whole kind of culture. So we decided to draw on that and use some records from his own collection that reflected that, which was really fun. And I really enjoyed like integrating like a music side to it. We also included some other fun 90s props like old Nintendo controllers that we already had at home. We didn't actually have them plugged in. I'll show you the photos here, but it looks like we're playing it. So I thought that was pretty well done. And we were able to kind of really create this scene and this vibe from very little, like not spending any money, which I think is really cool. So I didn't really have to source too much here. The sandwiches were supplied by the deli, of course, and they were incorporated into the shoot. I also worked with a stylist, the owner of the deli, his partner happened to be a stylist. So that was really cool to be able to work with someone like that and have them kind of take care of that side of things. So we got some cool vintage denim and also some awesome trainers as that is a really big part of 
kind of his interests at the deli and something that kind of all of the staff really embraced too. So it was cool to be able to bring like this streetwear kind of fashion element into a merch shoot like this for a restaurant because I feel like that's pretty different to what I see in the regular kind of merch shoots. So as you can see, there was just a lot more people involved than anything that I've ever done before. And I think it was really great to learn how to work with and communicate with more people. It also did feel like a lot of pressure because there was more people involved. And I think it was a good insight into what it would be like to work on something more editorial where there are different people all across different kind of things. It was overwhelming, but it was also good because I feel like the people who knew each thing were just doing that and really executing that well. So, you know, the model came in, she was great. The stylist, she sourced things. So it kind of took things off my plate a little bit, which I really appreciated. So let's talk about gear and how I approached that because that is an extremely important part of the process. So I knew that my location would be indoors and the natural light in my house isn't amazing, but I kind of wanted to use flash because that's the look that I have created for Joe's Deli. So I knew I'd be using direct flash on a point and shoot because I just feel like point and shoot hits different and is such a cool vibe with like the vignette and looks very kind of 90s. So I'm also a little bit kind of almost not superstitious, but I like to use things that kind of match and give me confidence. And the Yushika T4 is like a pretty 90s camera. It's famous for that era whether it's like skateboarding or like editorial stuff. And I knew we'd be wearing white t-shirts and I'd have like red lipstick on in front of a white wall. So I felt like the T4 was like kind of perfect for that. So on top of that, I always like to use an SLR because then you can see what you're focusing on. You can get closer. You've just got, you know, way, way more options than you do with a point and shoot. So we used the Canon Rebel G with a 40 millimeter pancake lens, which we've been using a lot lately and it's super sharp, really reliable. Auto focus is really fast. It just has one of those like cute little pop-up flashes, but photos looked awesome. We then also used the more kind of pro Nikon F100 with a speed light. We have used this setup before for sandwiches in the deli and they just looked so banging, like so, so good. So we were really keen to use this again and create that same vibe and look with the sandwiches, but in more context with people. So gear was all sorted. And I think it's a really good idea to kind of start thinking about that once you've done the mood board and you've committed to a look, like what gear am I going to use that's going to best execute that look? So obviously I need to decide what film stock I'm going to be using. And I think that's a pretty big part of it. So we chose Ultramax because it's kind of got like a 90s vibe, saturated kind of colors. It really pops. So we use that in the Yushika T4 for that kind of vibe. And then in the SLRs, we used Portra 400 only because this kind of felt high stakes considering there was so many people involved. And I just feel like when I use Portra, I know there's a bit of like wiggle room. And obviously we were shooting, um, you know, people. So wanted skin tones to look as flattering as possible. And I'm glad that we used Portra for reasons I will share later on. All right. So you've done your mood board. You've sent it to everyone. You've organized a time and a date and a location, um, a timeline, like when does this need to happen by? So I knew that they were dropping this merch kind of towards the end of August, early September. So I really needed to like turn this around as quickly as possible. So I made sure to get onto everybody ASAP and really lock this down. I think it's all well and good being an amazing photographer, but when you're working with people, you really need to show them that you're organized, reliable, you can communicate well and really get onto it because that might be the thing that separates you from another amazing photographer. So keep that in mind. I'm not trying to say that I'm an amazing photographer either. Okay. So once all that stuff is done and you're getting closer to the day of shooting, I like to do up a shot list. And this is something that I've started doing on my last few jobs and it has just been an absolute game changer. So writing up a just bullet pointed shot list of everything that you need to capture on the day using your first bits of the process to inform this. So, you know, what will it be used for? Maybe you need a mix of vertical shots and landscape shots write that down, say landscape shots for web. And you can cross that off as you go, knowing you've got those landscape shots in the bag and then move down your list. This will just help to guide you on the day because you might think like, oh yeah, I've got this all sorted. And then when you're there, you're like, 
oh my God, what was I even supposed to be doing? I like to check back regularly and cross things off, make sure I've got everything I need. And I also think this frees up a lot of brain space. And if you can just come in to a shoot and just do all of those absolutely like necessary shots that you've discussed with the person that they need, then you can move on to like the fun, more spontaneous, more candid, more creative shots. And that's normally where the actual magic happens. But as long as you've got those like necessary shots in the bag, then I just feel kind of more centered. So we did also grab some video footage while we were doing this shoot and made a fun little reel. And I think this is a great thing to offer if you are doing photos, even, you know, if you just capture video on your phone, we decided to use our Nikon Coolpix for like a Digicam lo-fi kind of feel. I feel like that matched everything else that we were doing. So it turned out really cool and I'm glad that we got that, but it would have been awesome to also have more footage, whether it was for this YouTube video or to turn into another reel or give to the client to kind of like upsell or just like offer something extra. We had so much going on, so we didn't really want to break out the XT4 on top of that and then have to juggle filming with that whilst also having all this stuff going on and all these like cameras and grabbing these stills, which is why we chose the Digicam. I kind of wish I had watched this course from the guys at Moment on how to capture awesome iPhone footage though, because that would have been a really easy, accessible way to get footage to turn into something else, but hey, maybe next time. So with short form video content becoming one of the most in demand types of content, it's really smart to level up in that area and have something extra to offer your clients or even just to build up your own personal brand or work online. Creating short, fun, engaging videos will help to bring more people over to your photography. Your smartphone is the easiest way to do this. And this course by the filmmakers at Moment shows you all you need to know about planning, capturing and editing phone footage to make an awesome looking and engaging video. These guys have been in the biz for a while and they are all over the YouTube, social media and filmmaking game. So it felt like insider knowledge seeing how they would go about creating this cool skate video on an accessible piece of gear that we likely all have in our pockets. I learned so much from Caleb and Niles in this course, iPhone filmmaking, create cinematic video with your phone. If you have been putting off doing video content because you think you need all this gear, then this is your sign to take this course by the filmmakers over at Moment and let them change your mind. Skillshare isn't just for learning things like video though. There are a wide variety of classes ranging from illustration, graphic design, photography, animation, web development, basically anything you want to learn and explore, Skillshare have a course for you. We are all exploring our career options and hoping to get paid to do what we love. So if you are looking for ways to level up in a new career or start a side hustle, Skillshare has plenty of courses to get you started. The first 1000 people to use the link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So what are you waiting for? Huge thank you to Skillshare for making this video possible. So we move on to the final stage of the process, which is the execution, doing the thing that you've been planning for. And this is where I crumble. <laughs> this is where I panic and I've been feeling super confident and I've got it really like etched in my mind what it's going to look like. And then when it all starts coming together and the cameras come out, or they get lifted up and I take those first few shots, I just totally have a panic attack because I think, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to do this but I push through and I just get those first few shots out of the way, knowing they're probably not going to be the hero shots. And as I go, I always feel better, get to the end. And I feel really, really confident because I've put all these things in place to support myself. So some things to consider in this stage are being prepared as possible. So either the night before or the morning of, I guess it depends if you're traveling or not. We were at home, but we got everything out and ready. So we had a softbox light that I'm using now in this video. We knew that we were going to have that. We knew we had to move furniture around, get the house in place. We knew that we needed props. I knew that I was going to be waiting on the stylist to drop things over, just making sure everything is as planned as it possibly can be. So it runs smoothly. 
Communication is really key on set as well. So I made sure that I printed off my shot list and showed it to my model so that she was aware of what kind of shots we'd be grabbing. And she was so great. She didn't need any direction. She was really, really super professional and she totally got the vibe. So that made it a whole lot easier. This is by far the biggest shoot I've ever done. I do product photography, but normally it's just one or two pieces. So it's fairly easy to get enough shots of each thing. In this case, there was maybe four or five different shirts in black and white in different sizes that all had kind of similar motifs, but they were different. So I had to be sure that I was capturing each one and not getting to the end of it and then realizing I'd forgotten to shoot like a whole shirt. So having a system around that, that's something that I didn't consider beforehand. So It's something I've learned and would consider next time if I was doing like a full merch campaign type thing again. We also decided to shoot a bunch of Instax wide shots, which was actually really, really helpful because then the model and I could see how we looked and how it was looking and it really gave us confidence, kind of like how they used to use them back in the day. I mean, it's an expensive way to give yourself confidence on set, but they looked really cool and we scanned them in and sent them through Uh, when we delivered the rest of the shoot. And I think it really just worked with the whole vibe of everything was very vintage and retro. So instant film felt like it fit really nicely. So as expected, things didn't go completely to plan and we kind of got a little bit fatigued with the indoor setting and I was worried that things were going to look too same, same. So we decided to head outside because the weather was really nice and film obviously performs best I'd say I suppose technically in natural light it was kind of hard to shoot because it was bin day (laughs) that's what we say here in Australia um so there was a lot of rubbish bins and our street is pretty like ordinary so again working around that was interesting but you would never know that from looking at the photos I'm really glad that we decided to just go outside and take a few shots out there because it really provided a lot of diversity and some of those shots ended up being my favorites but my absolute favorite favorite, favorite shots were these ones that we caught right at the end when we were just using up the rest of the roll. So it was finished so we could get it developed. And this is partly why I love film so much because this just always seems to happen. So we had this softbox that we're using now and then also like off camera flash. And if any of you have shot like film and flash, you don't know that the flash has gone off. So you're always kind of like second guessing yourself. It had been going off the whole entire shoot and we were like, yes, it's, it's gone off. It's fine. It's all working well. And then these end shots, it didn't go off. So typical, but I think they came out so cool. I absolutely love them. Partly the pose, but also the way they look like the light from the softbox was like just enough. So they have like an underexposed look to them, but they just look so, so nice. And I think this is just testament to how amazing film is and also how you can plan and plan and plan, but often the best shots come from something that's either spontaneous or even like a mistake technically. So it's important to embrace that and leave room for that in a shoot and not be like so, so rigid. Overall, the client was so stoked with this shoot, which is always amazing. And I'm really proud of myself for kind of having a lot of creative involvement in this and really like directing it all and being in it and shooting some of it too. It was a lot to do, but I'd really like to do more kind of fashion related shoots like this where you can, you know, really curate things. I really enjoy doing that. It also feels really amazing to be part of a new business here that's opened and is planning to open more stores. And it's just really like artistic and creative and embracing film, even though you know, there is like a risk element and it takes a lot longer. So I feel really grateful that I get to work with such a cool business like Joe's Deli. And you can follow them on Instagram to see more of the photography that I do for them. I'm really enjoying the process of doing professional shoots and I love to share all of this with you. So if there's any suggestions that you have for things that you want to see in future videos about my process or anything, please leave a comment below and let me know. I will be getting more footage of me on these jobs so I can show you that and make it more engaging for you to watch. Thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.